Hello biologist. Today we're going to do lab 2.20 on natural selection and we're also going to talk a lot about experimental design because experimental design is what's on the MCA test. So we want you to be well prepared for the MCA science test. So for this lab we're not going to do what's in the lesson. We're going to do um, a simulation on this website called FET and that will be in the notes for this YouTube. So you can go there. It's also on your lab sheet which you'll find in doc sharing. So don't use the lab sheet in the lesson. Use the one in doc sharing. Go to the website and you want to click the green button that says run now. If you are running a Mac it's going to say hey you can't run this. What you need to do is go to your downloads click the control button and then click on what you just downloaded and then you can have the option to open it. So when you get your simulation running it's gonna look like this. You're gonna have the option to have a bunch of bunnies um, and you can control what happens to this population of bunnies. We're gonna run a couple of experiments that involve adding a mutation to the population and then looking at a particular selection factor. The environment we're going to keep the same here. We want to keep some of our conditions um, the same and we want to change just one mutation at a time because remember we're doing the experiment and you want to control everything that you can in an experiment and just change one thing. Here's where you read the population for your experiment here along this axis of the graph. Um, in the simulation, here's where you look at where generations are running. It'll say time to the next generation, and that way you can watch this bar go along, and you'll know that your, your um, simulation is running through a generation. Here's where you pick a selection factor. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, just keep it on equator for this experiment. Um, we're only going to change one mutation and we'll do the first experiment totally together here. Before we do our experiment, we're going to write down our hypothesis. And remember, a hypothesis is an educated guess based on our previous experiment experience with a particular subject. We, we guess what's going to happen based on what we know. So based on what we know about populations and how they adapt to change, what do you think is going to happen if we make a bunch of the bunnies brown? So let's write down our hypothesis at the top of our lab sheet. I'll switch over to the lab sheet here. So remember a good hypothesis has three parts. It has an if part, it has a then part, if something happens, then something else happens, and often we add a because part. We explain why we think what's going to happen is going to happen. So if we add a brown fur mutation, then the allele frequency will change because we're guessing that predators may be able to find white bunnies more easily. So that's my hypothesis. You can write your own. Before we go on, let's make sure that you remember to fill out question one. In your own words, explain how you think that DNA, mutation, genotype, phenotype, and natural selection interconnect to cause evolution. I'm going to let you answer this one on your own. I'll just remind you that genotype is what is in your genes, and phenotype is the physical characteristics of the organism. Okay, here is our simulation. I'm going to set Hit reset all. Yep, to get it clear. Now I'm going to add a friend because obviously bunnies can't reproduce unless there are two of them. I'm going to let it run for two generations 
And then I'm going to add my brown fur mutation. And I'm going to let brown fur continue to be dominant. That's the, that's the um, default condition, so just keep it there. I'm going to let it run for two more generations. I'm going to adjust my graph here. And then I'm going to add some selection factors here. Otherwise, bunnies will take over the world. Now, before my first two generations appear, I'm going to pause it. I paused it down here. And after the first two generations, I'm going to read what my population was, and I can zoom back in if I need to here. I can look at brown fur is the blue line and white fur is the red line. So remember, after two generations, I can look, this is the five line, so I would say this is about seven, and this is about, oh, say 48. If you don't get exactly the same numbers, it's okay. I'm going to continue to let this run for a couple more generations. Make sure you take data after two generations, after four generations, and after seven generations. I need to let it run a couple more times to get to seven. You can see that the population is really changing here. I had a lot of bunnies. We introduced the wolves, then some then the population went down. And now the population is balancing out here. What has happened just visually look up here? What's happened to the balance between brown and white bunnies? Think about that while you're watching your uh, bunny generations run. I'm going to let it go at the end of this generation, and then I'll stop it. So I've let this run for a couple of generations. You can see where we introduced the wolves. The population was kind of skyrocketing here, and then it came back down. Make sure that after every two generations, you do hit the pause button, and you look here on this scale, you look for the what the brown fur bunnies in the blue line and the white fur bunnies on the red line. You can see as the population travels here, we had blue line at the bottom to begin with and now the blue line is on top. So just by looking at the graph, you can make some assumptions about what's going on. You can also visually confirm what's going on in your graph by looking up and hey, we have a lot of brown bunnies and not so many white ones. Just to give you an example, I have recorded um, my numbers here after two generations. I hadn't introduced the mutation yet, so of course your number of brown bunnies should be zero. And my total is going to be 18 because they're all white bunnies. After four generations, I'd introduced the mutation. The mutation hasn't really kind of taken off yet, so I have a few brown bunnies and more white bunnies for a total of 165. The tables are kind of turning here after we in introduce the wolves and we get some natural selection going on. And I will let you put in your own numbers for all of these data, but I will show you um, how to uh, calculate the percent of brown rabbits and percent of white rabbits. Since there are no brown rabbits, this is easy. It's zero. And we have 100% white rabbits. If we want to calculate the number of brown rabbits for the next one, we take the number of brown rabbits divided by the total rabbits, which here is 165. And you can do the math there. For the white rabbits, it's 133. That's the number of white rabbits right here. And we divide that by the total, which is 165 right here. And I'll let you do the rest of the math. 
I put in the last generation here so you can figure that out as well. We're going to have 150 total and you can practice doing percents here. So let's talk about the next experiment that you're going to do on your own. And here are the instructions for that experiment. But before we go over that experiment, let's talk about your hypothesis. I'm going to go for the second experiment. I'm going to go back to my simulation. I'm going to reset everything. So we go back to default. And this time, we're going to choose the long teeth mutation. And instead of looking at wolves as a selection factor, we're going to look at food. So let's use this information. We're going to give the bunnies long teeth as a mutation and use food as a selection factor. Let's make a hypothesis about what's going to happen in that situation. So now that we know a little bit more about the experiment we're going to do, let's talk about how we're, what kind of, what we think is going to happen. So if there is a long teeth mutation, then more bunnies with long teeth will survive. Not all mutations are beneficial, but this let's assume this one is going to be because they can better obtain food, which is going to, of course, lead to better survival. If you can eat more, you might be able to survive better. So let's look at the directions here. We want to click the reset button. When you're ready to start your experiment, you want to put add a friend so the bunnies can reproduce. Um, give them two generations. Watch the bottom, let it run. Um, then pause, then click long teeth. Let it run two more generations. And then put food as a selection factor. Let it run until seven generations and then let it run until 10 again. So let's go to the simulation and do that. So the first thing I want to do is hit reset. Yep. Then I want to add a friend. Now I want to want to want to watch it run down here for two generations. There's one. There is almost two. Okay, pause. How many bunnies do I have all together? Looks like I have about 18 bunnies, so I'll want to put that in my table. I'll have 18 bunnies with short teeth and none with long teeth. Now I want to introduce my mutation and let it run for two more generations. Remember, we paused after two generations. We wrote down what was happening. Now we let it run for two more generations. I'll adjust the scale of the graph here. This is the end of generation four. OK, there we go. So now you can see my bunnies with long teeth after four generations are at 100 and short teeth uh, looks like at about 385 or so. So that's after four generations and we've introduced that long teeth mutation. Now after four generations we want to put in a selection factor. I go over here to food and now I'll let it run till seven generations. So if you look carefully, you can see the bunnies with long teeth. Right there is a bunny with long teeth. Now they're being selected, so the food is making a difference. The population is going down now that we have a selection factor in. And that's one generation, that's two generations, and we're almost at an third generation. Okay, now I can look at my population data. I'll blow it up here so I can see it a little bit better. After seven, seven generations, my 
Short teeth bunnies are at about 35. My long